I'm going to bring up our next speakers. And uh, if there's time at the end, should we, do, should we do questions for everybody at the end? Or should we do more questions after your presentation? Or do you guys want to do it? I don't know. I'm in charge. We'll, we'll take a couple minutes after their presentation for, for questions. Andrew gets uh, nothing. <laughs> he knows uh, what to expect from me. Oh, you are. Well, let me let me let you get in there then, and I'll go ahead and read off their. Uh, uh, so I guess that was the just in case version, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna let you look like you know what you're doing. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our speakers while all this excitement is going on. Um, Jeremy Nelson is a software engineer at Stanford University Library and is the technical lead on the Synopia Linked Data Editor project. Did I say that right, Synopia? Okay, I have the accent on the right salon. <laughs> okay, but you both know how to pronounce this, right? Okay. Prior to working at Stanford, Jeremy uh, was a librarian at Colorado College, Western State College, and a number of software companies. You were a librarian at a number of software companies? I was a software developer before me. Okay, okay, that's cool. That's cool, too. Um, and he's also the author of two books, Becoming a Lean Library, and Mastering Rennes. Uh, Josh Grebin is a software developer at Stanford University Libraries and part of the library systems team, currently developer on the Synopia Link Data Project, <coughs> and has worked on the exploration and development of linked data for libraries for the past several years, another linked data uh, pioneer. Prior to working at Stanford, Josh worked as a systems librarian and software development at the Florida Center for Automation and began his career in libraries as a reference librarian. And I'm really looking forward to what you have to share with us in your live demo today. Very daring. Hello. So uh, we're, we're going to kind of split this off. I'm going to give more of a, a background and sort of approach we took with Synopia. And then Josh is actually going to do the uh, Synopia demonstration. So um, Synopia, uh, uh, the, our, our goal in Synopia is to really say a collaborative linked data uh, editor environment for, for use. You've probably heard people talk about it multiple times over this conference. So uh, as, uh, as was mentioned, my first book was on Lean Startup and applying Lean Startup ideas to libraries. And it's, my book's about four or five years old now, so um, it doesn't reflect my experiences at Synopia. But, and I think uh, that's really sort of informed things that I theoretically wrote about, but now have experienced firsthand. So, <laughs> um, so really, the, uh, a couple of core ideas that, that come from Lean Startup is that you have, um, you build a, a product uh, called a minimal viable product, or basically, you try to meet the minimal uh, requirements that you actually sort of pull from your uh, your users or your customers or, or whoever. And um, the really idea is that those, those requirements that you pull should really drive your development. And this, this idea comes, um, it originally comes from uh, lean manufacturing that Toyota uh, Motor Company sort of invented in the 1970s and 80s where instead of a traditional, and so here I have a, a little graphic from my book, uh, that uh, traditionally manufacturers will uh, create a product, market it, and um, push it out. So, the, the, so you, you really are not reflective necessarily of what the customers may or may not want. Well, pool is sort of the opposite idea. The idea is that it's the customer, customers themselves that, that drive or pull the the, the development of a product, or in this case, a software um, product. So um, Eric Ries, who's the originator of the Lean Startup, uh, in his book was really saying, that, okay, there's this idea of lean uh, development or, or lean manufacturing. How can we apply it to software development? So um, you can kind of see here where, you know, there's uh, on a sort of the, the top level, you're, if you're in a push process, um, you're in a, traditionally, the idea is that you have an uh, assembly line that keeps on pushing things forward. You, you know, there's a Charlie Chaplin movie, uh, Modern Times, where he gets inundated by things being on the assembly that keeps assembly line that keeps coming on, and, and 
The opposite for a lean or for a pull process is it's, a, it's the customer that actually requests the, 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 the product and then it kind of goes the opposite direction where things aren't, aren't started or developed until those are pulled from, uh, from the producer. Um, another uh, concept that, that Eric Reeves talks about is creating what's called a, a BML loop, or Build, Measure, Learn. And in a BM, BM, BML <laughs> loop, uh, the first thing you, you, you pull, you, you, you pull the initial set of requirements, you build this minimal viable product, and then you start, are, start measuring the impact. And then, and the reason, and this is, goes back to sort of agile development, is that you don't want to implement such a large <coughs> edifice that it makes it hard to respond to, to customer feedback. And on the Sinopia project, we actually had uh, uh, multiple points within the whole process, starting at the beginning and continuing through today, where we actually talk to and, and have the catalogers or the community that's going to be using Sinopia uh, participate and, and discuss and evaluate what we're, we're trying to build for them. Um, so right now we are very close uh, to having a, a minimal wild product for, for Sinopia. Uh, in, uh, in our current sort of work cycle, uh, we we put together a number of milestones, and currently we're working on milestone three. But uh, at each point, we wanted to deliver enough so that we could get reactions from our community. So initially, we uh, produced back in the last fall a prof the profile editor, which was a, a a fork of the Library of Congress's profile editor. And we also wanted to get the Snowbia homepage out, and so. So that was the first milestone. The second one was actually being able to load to see what a profile that contains resource templates would look like. And then our current one, and which we're working on now, is sort of this profile opening night. But this is where the really cool stuff starts happening, where we can take a, a, a profile that contains multiple resource templates and load it up into the editor to actually see how that would look like. And uh, part of this uh, current milestone that we're on is uh, hooking up sort of authentication and login. Um, we also want to do a little bit of user and group management. And of course, the real core piece is like adding and updating profiles that contain these resource templates. Um, the next, and really where we're, we're headed for for the MVP to release it, is actually the production of, uh, of original uh, link data or in RDF. And that is really, I think, the crux of what we're trying to provide for our community, for all of us, is an actual tool that I can go in and uh, select a resource template and start building and generating RDF as I sort of catalog that. Um, there's, there's a couple of key points in, the, in this milestone four, uh, such as creating and saving RDF data, finding that data that you may have created in Synopia, and then um, referring to uh, a previously created RDF within uh, the editor itself. So in a cooperative environment, I want to be able to, to reference um, other entities that may have been created within Synopia. Um, one, another, I want to mention sort of a, a, a concept in, in Lean Startup is, is being able to be flexible and agile enough to sort of pivot if, if some of your requirements change or, or if user feedback sort of, sort of indicates that you're doing something that needs changing. And we actually did a, a pretty big pivot in terms of the design of the Sinopia editor. Uh, last February at Code for Lib, uh, myself and Ashley Yusong, <coughs> who's the Stanford user interface uh, expert who's been working on this project as well, I did a, a pre an all-day pre-conference where we had uh, some a, a variety of different members of, uh, of the Code for Lib, which I think overlaps, but this is not necessarily uh, all LD for Peak uh, <coughs> individuals. Um, we sort of showed some early early designs. Um, we uh, asked them and had more of a free-form discussion, and it came about that. They were really, uh, there's a lot of unsatisfaction with, uh, at our time, at the current, at that time, we were using the, the same model as the BFE 
the big frame editor from the Library of Congress, where uh, there was this, this inter user interaction model where you would click and it would up, up pop up a modal, and then you might have another pop up for a modal, and you would keep, keep, keep popping all these modals up until you didn't know where you're at in sort of the context. So, Astrid had, had created an early prototype that showed, instead of doing pop up modals, sort of an outline form. And it would have came clear that that really was, was, a, was a big, big uh, uh, problem point for, for individuals. We were, because of how uh, we were doing this lean process and lean development, it was actually didn't, didn't require that much uh, refactoring to be able to uh, implement, uh, or begin implementing, I should say, uh, Astra's design. And so what Josh is going to show you now is, is this new uh, Synopia editor I guess close to milestone three. So, okay, so I'm going to get to the demo here just a little bit, um, and I just want to say that I swear this worked at the hotel this morning. <laughs> 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 but I do have the backup slides just in case. So it'll be fine. Um, okay, so this is the you know the Snowbee home page, and uh, before I get into the demo, I just want to kind of show you things around it, uh, some things that kind of go to the points that Jeremy was making. So we've got the help and resource here, and there's this useful link here, I think, for everyone is a Synopia help site. Um, and on this page, there are links to different things uh, about the project, um, but specifically this technical project plan, which basically talks about all of the use cases that we started out with <coughs> to decide what with the widgets and um, you know, basic components that we need to start building the MVP. Um, so basically, you know, we broke those things up into milestones and then we started working on the milestones. Um, and this link here basically shows, you know, the architecture, the components that came out of those discussions and that documentation. Um, and then they're color coded and broken out into the different milestones. So basically, we're kind of in between milestone three and four, and you can kind of see from the different colors. Um, when we first started, milestone one consisted of basically just getting you know, a version of the profile editor up and running so that people can create profiles to use in Zenobia once, you know, that was up and running. Um, milestone two consisted of just being able to load the profiles, have a basic, you know, Zenobia homepage and GUI editor, um, do lookups to questioning authority, which I think Len's going to talk about next. And so those are basically milestone two. Three is getting more into the weeds with basically um, you know, getting the form up based on the profile, having the ability to have the right components to edit the right things that are configured in those profiles, and also call, bringing the lookups and basically like tying a lot of this stuff together. Um, and you can see like from some of these components are like half pink, half blue, so that's kind of reflects that we're, we're a little bit late and we're hoping to meet those milestones before this conference, but we're kind of running a little bit behind, so uh, these are things that are in progress and kind of transitioning from getting those things done uh, into the next milestone, which is really going to more fully bring everything together in that you know, we'll be able to close the loop by searching for resources that are saved in Synopia, um, using those as the basis for you know, further resources to, to catalog, um, and you know, publishing the link data, including more sources that include more context uh, data. Um, so yeah, I encourage you, if you, know, you follow the links that I showed you, go to the Help and Resources Technical Project Plan, you can look at this document in more detail. Um, so, without further ado, well, let me kind of just go here and show you the profile editor, which is basically all we did was, you know, kind of simplified it, just made it so that you can import an existing resource template as a basis to start, um, and then, you know, just go ahead and do that because I'm actually bring that up. Okay. So basically, yeah, we can import a resource template, we can make changes. They export it basically, download it back to your computer, and then we can reapply that in Synopia. So we get to Synopia. Um, there's a login functionality, which I'm going to just kind of gloss over. You, usually that says you log in, it takes you out to Amazon. Uh, Cognito is what we use to log in and authenticate. It takes you back to the application as an authenticated user. That's already done here. So we'll go to the link data editor. Uh, when you start out, basically, you have to pick a resource template. So it kind of forces you to this resource template tag. 
can't go to the end of your tab unless you're actually having templates in. So there, I have a. This is on my, lo my local computer. I have nothing in there right now. It's kind of starting from scratch. I loaded one thing, uh, but basically you can import resource templates. Some resource templates just have like one thing in it. And some of them have a whole bunch of, if it's a profile, with more than one resource template. Um, and it loads all those things. Um, a lot of times, resource templates depend on other resources. So if you if you have dependencies, you have to upload all those things so that when you you know edit something, it has all the dependencies. So if I click on a simple one, there's just one field here basically. It's, a, it's just a straight input field. Uh, the profile knows that. And you type the data. Um, but if you click on something that's, you know, perhaps more involved, like a work, and it has dependencies, it's going to let you know, currently, um, it's going to let you know, okay, you have to upload the dependencies. In the future, we'll probably be able to show what we can, you know, and then indicate the things that you can't do. Um, okay, so now I'm going to just do a little quick transition so I can show you actually the really cool stuff. Um, which is how the back end and the front end kind of work together. So I'm going to do that. Just do a quick environmental change, and this is just so I can like scoop the resource templates.
Not seeing any other hands, so let's give our speakers a hand. 